All right, here we go. I think we're all in here. Can everybody hear me? Uh, the Committee on Parole is called to order today. It's Tuesday, August the 11th, 9.45 a.m. My name is Brennan Kelsey. I'll be chair. Uh, see with me is Ms. Pearl Wise and Mr. Keith Jones. The panel is conducting parole hearings today by Zoom technology in response to the governor's proclamation relative to COVID-19 at public hearings. We chose this platform so it allowed for observation and input by the members. Staff supports a seat at the UFC headquarters in Baton Rouge. We are our remote location is East Baton Rouge Parish Prison. Uh, would staff and support at East Bar Baton Rouge Prison please introduce yourself. Corporal Anthony Smith, East Baton Rouge Sheriff's Office. Thank you. All right, we're ready for our first case. Okay, the case is for Mr. Ronald Ellis, DOC 129154. It's a revocation case. There are no visitors here. All right, thank you, Leah. All right, please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. Ronald Ellis, 129154. All right, Ronald, we're here for parole revocation hearing. Do you have a copy of the parole revocation questionnaire in front of you? No, sir. Can you get a copy of it in front of you? Now, I, I, I appreciate them helping you behind, but I need a copy of yours with your signature on the bottom. You have one? It's, it's, in, a, um, it's in my dorm. I'll pull uh, up Mr. Kelsey on screen we, share if you want we, to. We're going to pull up screenshot. I just want to make sure that your, your signature at the bottom and you're signing. Yes, sir. Did, did you you sign one at your signature? You're yes, well, sir. okay. You're for the record, you signed this parole revocation questionnaire. All right. Uh, I'll explain the process to you. Uh, I'll, um, we'll, we'll, I'll read some charges. You'll plead guilty, not guilty, guilty with a statement or not guilty with a statement. You understand the process? Yes, sir. Can you read and write? Yes, sir. And you, so you were, uh, you did not request, request point of counsel and you're not eligible for point of counsel. I didn't request one. Nope, okay, got it. All right, not eligible, you can read and write, okay. <clears throat> All right, Ronald Ellis, DOC number 129154. Uh, the charge is four, Agent Frazier alleged that the subject engaged in criminal conduct on May 30th, 2019. As a result, he was arrested on the date and charged with aggravated assault with a firearm and false imprisonment on 6-17-2020. He pled guilty to simple assault under BR 07-19-0327. How do you plead? Guilty with a statement. Okay, and can you see that on the screen? Is that your signature? Yes, sir. All right, we got it on there. Okay, great. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, give you a statement. Well, I, I pled guilty to the, the misdemeanor charge because I was told that if I pled guilty to it, that I wouldn't be violated and come to find out that they couldn't determine that because they had no control over which, which y'all decisions are gonna make. I have been sitting in, in jail for almost a year and a half trying to fight these charges, which I don't know who the people live. They never had no evidence on me saying that I did it. And once they offered me to, to drop the charges to a misdemeanor to let me out, I thought that it was a, a get out of jail free Called and I, I, I took it. If, if I knew I was going to have to back up the rest, you know, my life in jail, I would have never took that plea. And so, I, so and I'm going to let Mr. Jones talk to you. So, so you're not aware of any, you don't know why somebody charged you with aggravated assault with a firearm or false imprisonment. You don't know why somebody would have, don't have any clue. No clue. And you just, so you got no clue about that, but you just pled to something different just to get I, out. When they arrested me, they asked me, did I ever get into it with an individual? And I told them, no, I, I, I don't, I don't, I have no knowledge of none of these people, none of the names of the people that they told me was, I don't even know them. All right, would you answer, Mr. Jones? Yeah. 
Uh, good morning, Mr. Ellis. How you doing? I'm okay. Why do you suppose they came and arrested you? Um, I never, I never really thought up, thought about it. I, I don't have, I don't have any idea. They came and arrested you. You've been in jail for ten months or whatever, and you never thought about it. I, I thought about it, but I don't know what, what made them arrest me on some charges. Where I, I try to explain to the people, I don't even know the people. I have no idea who it is. I don't even know who I'm charged with. The names that they told me that they, they just don't, they don't ring a bell to me. I don't know these people. I go, I went to work every day at CSI. Did Jack they, Park. did they tell you where it was, where it's it, supposed to have happened? At the house, at, at that house where I was standing. When we just moved there. All right. Well, so they had that part right. Correct. Yes, sir. Did they? Um, did you ever tell somebody there's going to be a bloodbath tonight? Never said it. Never had a gun. Have you touched a firearm since um, you've been on parole? Sir, I haven't had as much as a traffic ticket since I've been on parole. Nothing. I paid all my ties and I went to work, passed my drug streams. I didn't do nothing. Um, I knew well, the consequences of touching a gun. All right, that's all the questions I have. Yes, per wise. <clears throat> uh, sir, the, uh, the record shows that you were out for uh, your original charge was first degree murder where you received a 50 year sentence. And you were released uh, January 24th of 14 until this incident happened on May 30th of 19. So you did do well for a long time. But you, you're telling us today you, you have no indication of what happened in between. As for that, the charges that they got me arrested for, ma'am, I, don't, I, don't, I, I didn't have nothing to do with any of that. You realize that be, you know, because of your, you know, your first degree murder charge is concerning. Right. You know, have a simple assault it's very concerning for us and for you to say you don't you don't know anything about it i had nothing nothing to do with it ma'am that's the god of the truth don't know the people and i i, I if i would have if they wouldn't offer me the opportunity to plead guilty to the simple charge to get out i would have took it to trial and there's no way nobody would have been, been able to come and identify me because it ain't me i just was overwhelmed with the long wait and wanted to go home. They offered me opportunity to get out and I took it. I really just I thought I was gonna take it until- Okay, uh, that, uh, now the police report said that uh, the victim said that you, her ex-boyfriend, you demanded her keys and her money and that you were not allowing her to leave her residence. The victim stated that Ellis was armed with a sawed off pump shotgun and that you pointed the weapon at her and the other victims inside the residence. So you said you didn't do none of that. That didn't happen. And what's the what what's the victim's name was? Uh does it say? Does it not say? It I've got it. I have it. Victim's name was um. I'm sorry. I had it. Okay. Uh, Kawanda Sims, Lakina Sims, Ashanti Fed, Brandon Landhart, and Jordan Strahan. I so your, st your statement to us today is that all these people lied on you. I know Kawanda Sims, but nobody else, nobody else on there, I know, I, I know those people. But, but again, my question to you is that your statement to us this morning is that all those individuals lied on you. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. That's all I had, Jim. All right, uh, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? A statement on my behalf? It, yeah, I, go ahead and make a statement on your behalf. I, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. These people lied on me. Lied on they, they knew what I was up against. They lied on me. I, I I didn't threaten nobody, and I never had a gun. Why they want you? Why they lie on you? Why they want you to go? Why they want you to get in trouble? 
I, I can't answer them questions because I, I I don't have I can't I can't see no reason for me for them wanting me to go to go back to prison after I just did 25 flat years in prison already for a charge. I didn't do anything wrong for them to say I had a gun or threaten people like that because I don't even know who they are. I, I, I have a question. Mr. Jones, go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Jones. Who is Kawanda Sounds? She, she was a girlfriend of mine that used to she, she used to work at the correction center where I was housed at for the 25 years. She was okay. a girlfriend of mine. And she knew that the stuff that would send me back to prison. Yeah. Uh, why would she why would she be mad at you? Well, a, a few months before we, I moved, I had read a text message from I, it, basically she was supposed to have been cheating on me and I was gonna move out and this come up. So you were living with her? Yeah, I used to stay with her on, on Cork Street. Okay. And I moved uh -huh. to South Terrier. And, and did she know you were gonna move out? Well, we, we talked about it like six or seven months previous to that. And I told her once I had got my parole money and I was able to move to another place where I can get me a, a address to get in my parole officer that I was leave, that I was, that I was gonna move out. And right around that time is when I got arrested. Around the time my parole money, I mean my um input tax money came in, is when I got arrested. So I would think this his story was concocted out of jealousy, but I, I never done none of them things. We never, if you can contact her, we 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 never had a, a physical altercation. Never. I'd like to make a motion for executive session. Motion for executive session. I second. Roll call. Ms. Wise? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Kelsey? Yes. I got to tell you, this one is interesting to me. He's locked up for first degree. He's served 25 years, and he's backing 15 more years because he had a 40-year sentence. So depending on what they decide, he will have to serve. If they revoke him, he will have to serve another 15 years. Now, it could be he'll be eligible for parole after a certain amount of years, so it's not necessary that he'll be all 15, but the odds that he'll get a parole uh, granted after being revoked, given a second chance, is what you would think would be low. Um, then to add on top of it, that the woman he's dating was a correctional officer for 25 years with him, give or take. Um, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll give the board props that they're going into an executive session, but you know they should. You, the, the, the guy is it, riding on 15 years of his life, but do you believe him? One, do you believe him? I mean, the whole shot off shotgun, six eyewitnesses. Uh, or do you think it was made up? Do you think that they're going to revoke him or are they going to give him another chance? Let's see. It's been about six minutes now, um, which is a pretty decent amount of time for an executive session. And this is also, I think, the first session. Uh, no, it's not. Um, but they're pretty sure they're not on their lunch break. But well, here we go. All right, I think we're all back now. Uh, is panel prepared to vote? Yep. Mr. Uh, Jones. Um, Mr. Ellis, um, I, um, you were out for years uh, before this came about and, uh, and you've done over a year uh, waiting for this hearing, my vote today is to not revoke your parole. All right, Miss um, Wise. Uh, Mr. Ellis, I, um, very, uh, it's, it's very, it's very concerning. Uh, this is uh, this whole incident is very concerning. Uh, my vote is to revoke your supervision based on your guilty plea to the simple assault charge. 
So you have one vote to do not revoke and one vote to revoke. I also am going to find you guilty of the charge, and I'm going to vote to revoke your parole. Uh, it's, it's very concerning uh, about what's going on, but we, uh, you play guilty with a statement and find you guilty of that. So you have two votes to revoke, one to do not revoke. Your parole's been revoked. So I have to do, I have to back up 25 years? You, you have parole eligibility. You get with them and they'll get with your parole eligibility. Man, I don't know. I got to tell you, I feel bad. I feel actually, I, I found myself rooting for him. I did. I didn't realize it's 25 years he has to back up. I'm confused on the math because I thought that he had a 40-year sentence and he served 25, but maybe maybe I heard it wrong because 40 years would be a pretty low sentence for first degree. So he has, uh, I mean, what he said, he has to back up another 25 years. Can you imagine finding that out? Now, here's the thing. If you really did show up at someone's house with a sawed-off shotgun and said there's going to be a bloodbath tonight and threaten all those people, I would say, you know, you have to lock him up. He's, he's a loose cannon. He's done it once. He might do it again and all that stuff. But just imagine if it was made up. I mean, the character of someone who would be a correction officer and then become boyfriend-girlfriend with the former inmate move in together isn't saying much to me personally. And she understands how the system works. and But at the same time, I think it was five people who made witness statements. And five people. To try to get five people to make something up is, uh, that's, that's just really difficult to do. Like, why would she involve four other people in the story? She would just say it herself, right? And that's where I kind of believe that it had to have happened because... Five people. Man. You know, something else I've never seen. They have an inmate sitting there in the back uh, watching the hearing. That is not cool. We've never seen uh, where other inmates can watch revocation hearings. That stuff needs to be private. Um, so I'm quite surprised that they're letting that happen. I don't think we've ever seen that before. And that the board let that go. But, you know, hey, we, we always think of Miss Wise as kind of being the most lenient one, but she uh she did not she did not buy into that, not at all. What did you think? We can do another one. I think we can see the, the, the gentleman behind him, his revocation hearing. You want to do that? Okay. I think we're here. Okay, Mr. Kelsey, this is the case for Raymond Huddleston. It is a revocation case from East Baton Rouge Parish Prison, DOC number 409685. His mother, Miss Albertine Huddleston, is supposed to be here to speak on his behalf. She may be having trouble signing in, so she may come in uh, after we get started. And that's it. All right, please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. Uh, my name is Raymond Huddleston. My DOC number is 409-685. Hi, Raymond. My name is Brennan Kelsey. I have Ms. Pearl Wise and Mr. Keith Jones. will be your, uh, your uh, revocation panel today. We're here for a revocation hearing. Do you have a uh, parole revocation questionnaire in front of you? Yes, sir. That's your name at the bottom, signature. Yes, sir. Can you read and write? Yes, sir. You weren't appointed, you, you weren't appointed to counsel. Then. You, you, were not, you didn't request appointment to counsel. It's preliminary here. No, sir. How y'all doing? All right. I'll explain the process to you. I'll uh, read some charges. You'll plead guilty, not guilty, guilty with a statement, or not guilty with a statement. And we'll ask some questions and you can respond at the end. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. Raymond Holston, DOC number 409685. <clears throat> Rule number one <clears throat> Agent Barsavich charged the offender, 
charged that the offender was arrested on 11 14 2019 by the East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Office and charged with violation of sex offender registration under docket 19 07533. It was billed with knowingly, he was billed with knowingly providing false information and failure to arrest your sex offender. On 3 3 2020, the subject pled guilty to criminal mischief. How do you plead? I plead guilty, sir, with a statement. With a statement, okay. Yes. Agent Barsovich stated the subject required to pay parole supervision fees, $63 a month. It's currently behind in the amount of $504. Rule number 10, how do you plead? Uh, I plead guilty, sir. With a statement, you said guilty or guilty? Yes, yes sir, guilty with a statement. Agent Bars 13, Agent Barsovich stated the subject uh, is to have no contact with my children. Barsovich stated that Subject was not allowed to have contact, including living in residence with children under 18 unless consent had been granted on court and parole board. This includes his own children. Barsby stated at 11 14, 2019, when East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Office arrested the subject for sex offender registration violations, they discovered the subject had driven to their office with a baby in, a, in his vehicle. The subject left the baby in his locked car, vehicle alone the entire time he was inside the sex offender registration office as the victim of sex crime or the juvenile victim. He is not allowed to have unsupervised contact with juveniles. Barsovich stated that 11 12 2019, he met the subject and discussed the issue with him, and he could not have contact with minors unless the parole board grants his privilege after a request was made to them. How do you plead? I plead guilty, sir, with a statement. Guilty with a statement. All right, well, you can, uh, Miss Pearl, you can ask Ms. answer Miss Pearl's question, or you can tell us what you want to tell us. Yes, sir, I'll let her speak first. No, sir, I want to hear your statement first. Yes, ma'am. I'm so sorry. Okay. Okay, okay let's um let's start with uh one. Um where they say I will not engage in any criminal activities, nor will I associate with people. Okay, let's start with that first. Okay, I did um I wasn't in criminal activities, first of all. I did, of course, drive to the sex offender office to pay just the uh the notification where they put it in the newspaper. I had not already paid the the three hundred and ninety nine dollars. I just had to pay the hundred and eight dollars for the newspaper. So they tell me one time they closing at three o'clock, but I got to be there before two forty five. My son, he down here at Turner's Industry, um, um, that blue bonnet. So I'm with him. So I had to actually leave him to go to the sex offender office. It's raining. I left there at two o'clock to get on the interstate to go to the section office to make it there before they close. So I won't have a warrant for my arrest. So I paid them their money. And while I'm paying for their money, mind you, I was acting in good faith. Uh, well, the lady, my, one of my mom's friends that worked next door to the section office, I asked her, to, uh, can she watch my niece, my, my grandbaby, while I'm running here and pay this money on her? So how they was notified which they didn't even state that how they was notified that my grandbaby was in the car was because my mama friend was ready to go she knocked on the door to the sex offender office and notified lieutenant Mathis that i had she was watching my grandbaby while i went in there to take care of my people and the people to pay them hundred dollars so that's how that happened that's how they knew about my grandbaby even in the car second of all uh i'm gonna move along to uh, t uh, 10, where it says $504. I was released from incarceration September the 23rd for a simple burglary. That's what I'm on parole for. I'm not on parole for a sex offense. I want to clarify that. I'm released from September 23rd, 2019 for a simple burglary. How, I asked them, how was I in the real $504 if I was incarcerated, back incarcerated November the 14th? And this is his explanation was because it continues even though you're in jail. Okay, so now that explained it that. Okay, okay, so you see I'm in the real. I didn't know I would do that. Okay. Now, the special condition part. This is where we have the controversy at. And I want, I, I would like for y'all, if you can, just you know, take time to understand and follow along with me, please. Because this has been a problem in my life for the, almost the last 20 something years. And as of now, me and this female have a four year old daughter. And um, I'm not on parole for a sex offense. 
I completed that conviction in 2015, February 9th of 2015, I was completed that conviction. I'm not on parole for assistance. So it says, he says, you are not to have any contact with uh, children under the age of 18. And from further research, I did out the criminal code procedure, which comes out, excuse me, comes out the Louisiana criminal code procedure book. As I was doing my research, I wanted to establish the fact that they do got a, a rule and regulation for that, that you can't be around children under the age, which would fall under revised statute 1481.2, molestation of a juvenile. And this is what it states. And I think I sent y'all all a copy of this um, package I, I had um, did my research on. And it states conditional parole shall include treatment in a qualified sex offender program. It shall also be a quality, it shall also be a condition of parole that the offender be prohibited from being alone with a child without the supervision of an adult. Now, um, in the process of that, this is what 15538 says, the Louisiana Rise Statute, which is a special condition too. No sex offender whose offense involves a minor child who is 12 years old or younger should have any contact, and that goes back to the contract of 15542. And it's the same contract right here. I think I sent y'all a packet. It's the same contract that they keep forcing me to sign before I get out of jail. And it's, if I don't sign this contract, I don't be released. This contract says a sex offender registration form. Mm -hmm. And so what it's doing is, after I read the sex offender contract form, it's clearly stating too, again, in the sex offender on page seven of nine, it says, in accordance with Louisiana revised statute 1491.2, unlawful presence of a sex offender. And it says, in the sex offender convicted of a sex offense, as defined in 15541, when the victim is under the age of 13, shall be prohibited from being physical present in certain places that that will falls with uh minor children that mean i couldn't have no contact with my own and nobody else and if it's okay with you i don't i want to ask a question please and um if you don't mind can you please establish on record um uh, i was charged with criminal knowledge of a juvenile can you establish the age of that victim at the time of the commission we don't have, as, we as you we don't have we don't have those records as you stated you're okay. not on supervision for that charge right however however yes ma'am you signed the sex offender contract exactly so, so our mandate is to uphold that contract okay and i don't disagree with you upholding it but what i'm establishing is the contract shouldn't apply to me i got 1480. how old was your child how old was your victim she was 13. That's what I'm saying. She was 13 or older. This is what Colonel Nala says. Well, I want I do want to state this, sir. That's for another day in another form. Ma'am. The uh the establishing that is not under the responsibilities of this body. Uh which... I need you the parole board. That, that's not under our responsibility. Okay. Uh get with classification and, and ask them to help you get that established. Okay. But that, that, that's where that's where that that's where that begins, and that's where that paperwork is generated at in classification with your court minutes and your court documents. And just make sure that, that you're correct about the age of your victim. She I could am. have been turning 13 that year, but she might not, but she would have been 12 so, on the day. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. They got it at probation and parole. Um okay, right, right. Came up here and brought me the paper. They uh -huh. the age of the victim at the time. And I'm like, wait. Why am I signing this? And then as I kept on reading it, they also showing aggravated uh, sex offense. You got to sign this contract, which is under revised statute 15543.1. At the time of my conviction in 1999, January 6, 1999, this contract I'm going to um, show it to you, I never signed no contract, which is what 15.542 explains right here. I never signed this. It says written notification by courts form to be used. And this is it right here. It's in the criminal code procedure. And it also mm -hmm. states um, 
It's almost basically the same thing that I was just saying on the 1491. And it says if the victim is a minor child and they saw an involving a victim who was under the age of 13 at the time of the commission, revised statute 1491.2 is applicated, which prohibits such offender from reciting or being present in certain locations. Now, I wanted to also um, explain that I was looking at molestation of a juvenile. Molestation says, molestation of a juvenile states for certain sex offenders, they, they, they can't be without uh, molestation states prohibited from being alone with children without the supervision of adults. Then on the 15, 538, which none of that applies to me because they said I'm on the 3B, Title 3B. It states conditions. Yeah, let's stay with let's stay with your charge. Yeah. Let's right. stay with your charge. I am, but I'm I'm what I'm I'm, I'm establishing right. what they're doing in the law and how I'm I was on the criminalities of a juvenile. Right, let's stay with that one. And the thing is, they saying under this, you can have contact under molestation of a juvenile, you can have contact with a victim or uh, a minor child, but it's a certain amount. So in 1999. I was convicted of a criminal knowledge of a juvenile. You telling me that you either I can sign this contract before I get out of jail or I don't get out of jail. In other words, I done, I done paid my dues to the charge that I did. I'm not, I'm not here to all about the charge because I done did the time for it. I got convicted in 1999. I completed that conviction in time on that charge in 2004. I completed the full conviction on the 400, 573 in 2015. I've been off parole since 2015. I got convicted again May 29th, uh, 2018 for a simple burglary charge. My only discrepancy is my life is being taken away from me for only one reason. The old things that has been done away with that I'd have paid my dues to. Then before I'm able to get out of jail, they are forcing me to either sign this contract or I don't leave jail. And my life is much more than jail. You know, I mean, I just want my life back. I don't want them. But sir, sir, this body is not able to address all those concerns that you brought up. Is there yes. any other statements you want to make about these allegations? Um, let's see. Um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and let you all speak. And I, I, I mean, okay, I, thank I, you. That's all I had, Chairman. All right, Mr. Jones. Mr. Huddleston. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I admire your ambition and pursuing uh, trying to learn about the law. You are not a lawyer. Right. Uh, fortunately, I am. Right. Yes, sir. And, and I can tell you <laughs> that um, that you can't go through statutes and pick and choose and uh, and know and, and feel as though you know everything that applies to you. Now, the 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 most incorrect thing that you said well, actually you this was correct you said your claim is that the contract shouldn't apply to you right did you sign it i did sign it because well they... then it applies to you okay so... your remedy that the law recognizes always that if you are aggrieved by some issue that you have a remedy and your remedy was to refuse to sign a form that you felt was wrongly presented to you for signature, they would not have released you from jail at that point. Mm -hmm. and, and then your remedy is to file a writ of habeas corpus mm -hmm. with the court. Uh, inmates do it all the time. Yes, sir. It, you didn't have to have a lawyer to do it, but, but you probably could have reached out to the public defender's office and sought their assistance on that very issue, but that's not what you did. You signed it. Yes, sir. And and you are obligated by the provisions of a contract that you sign. Not which not not only obligated to the things that you think ought to apply to you. We don't get to go through contracts that we sign, agreements that we sign, and say, "Well, I signed this, but I really didn't mean it." Mm -hmm. And this, uh, I signed this, but it, I didn't. It shouldn't have applied to me because uh, of this, that, and the other thing. That's not how it works, Mr. Huddleston. And, and you, you put in a lot of work and I understand it, but, but you don't just saying it shouldn't apply to me 
is not it doesn't help us because we have to look at a signed contract. What other provisions shouldn't apply to you of that contract? Oh, uh, the stuff that they got on here is like for aggravated sex offenders. Yeah. And it's, it's basically what it is, is it's just one thing that's really that's that's controversial because it's showing yeah. specifically it's a controversy for you. No, it's specifically showing that on his offender, if the victim is under the age of 13, that's what the problem is. And then not only that, if that don't even come from chapter three B. Uh, that comes from chapter uh, 3A of the criminal code procedure, which is supervision, release, supervised release of a sex offender, where it says applicator 15561. Mr. Huddleston, if you have a claim, yes, sir, uh, your claim is in the district court, not here, right? We are to consider only whether you violated the, the conditions of your parole, right? And it would appear that you did to okay. me now my recommendation to you and this is not legal advice i'm not advising you that you do it I, and as a matter of fact i withdraw the word recommendation <laughs> yes, i sir. apologize for using <laughs> yes, it. That's i will true. tell you that something that you may consider doing is filing a writ of habeas corpus with the district court and asking a judge to rule on the issue yes sir. and you can cite all the provisions that you have there yes, uh you can uh call the public defender's office and see if they'll send somebody out to help you with it. Uh, and and uh, and then you'll get your day in court. Yes, sir. Judge will set it for hearing. It'll probably be a hearing just like this one on Zoom, but but nevertheless, you'll get it yes, sir. and and you'll clarify it. But but I would suggest to you that your argument that a contract shouldn't apply to you that you sign mm -hmm. is not your best argument. Yes, sir. Only reason why I only reason why I, I mentioned about the contract because I wanted to establish the fact that I've been going through this. This is what keep putting me in jail. Yeah, I'm not. In, I'm not out here doing nothing crazy or in doing crimes. I lay. I was acting in good faith. I went like I say. I got out September the twenty third. I went and paid them. They three hundred ninety nine dollars. And then I was on my way back. I went back to pay them the hundred and eight dollars for the newspaper stuff. So, in the midst of all this, you locked me up because you say that I had my grandbaby in the car. Okay. Then they say that my grandbaby was locked in the car. Okay. So, I mean, I'm like I said, I'm not finna. The issue is, Mr. Huddleston, whether the grandbaby was in the car with you or not. Okay. The 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 locked in the car seems pretty inflammatory, but that's not really the issue. Right. The issue is whether you were around a child under of twelve. Course, of course, I was around my grandbaby. I have no no. There I, you have it. Okay. The end, Mr. Huddleston. That's all the questions I have. All right. Would you like to make your final uh, comment? For me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um. At this time, I mean, I, I mean, I was like I said, I was acting in good faith. They dismissed the charge of failure to register as a sex offender. Failure to register to be here as a sex offender. I signed that. I mailed it in. They dismissed it. They tried to. They added on um, providing false information, which falls under failure to register as a sex offender. Uh, they amended. I, I mean, I got the. I got. I copped out to a misdemeanor criminal mischief. So, failure to register as a sex offender fell under fifteen five forty two one four it was dismissed you don't need to cite the law to us i'm, I'm i mean I'm, I, I apologize if you know what i'm saying i don't want you to feel like i'm being i'm just trying to get my point across because you've got your point across what i'm trying to do is i i, I just want my life man this yes sir. keep coming back and forth there for something that i done paid my dues to i done did the time for and me signing a contract I don't, I, I'm, I don't want this no more. This is, is, it's agitating, and I've been through a court since March third. The charge been dismissed since March third. I apologize that we are here today. I apologize for even bugging you all about something that I did not already took care of and did the time for. I do apologize, and I appreciate your assistance, um, Mr. 
What it is? Jones. Jones. Mr. Jones? I appreciate mm -hmm. your assistance, Mr. Jones. Uh, you're right. You're going to need to get that handle there. It's going to always pop up. That's all we can tell you. Mm -hmm. We're not here mm -hmm. for that today. So it's uh, you finished? The panel prepared to vote? Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, what's it? Why is you having a Jones hat? I'm Paul Jones. Okay, I mean, uh, uh, sir, I, I feel you. I really do. I feel you. I feel you. But as Mr. Jones explained, the contract, nevertheless, it is in place, and right. and I, you and you just got to embrace this life that you have to live under. You can't be around your grandkids until you get that straight. I'm, I'm, you know, it just is what it is. We can't change it today. So my vote is that you uh, that your parole be revoked based on uh, the allegations and, and your guilty plea to the allegations. All right, Ms. Ms. Jones. Uh, my vote, Mr. Huddleston, is also uh, to revoke. Um, if um, if you had had Agent Bursevich's um, approval and permission. But that's the thing, he said. Not, no. My turn. If, if, if that had happened, then I doubt that they would have charged you with a parole rev revocation if you That's did what they said you could do. He told me that had to come from the parole board or the courts. So and I was never ordered when I went for parole March 15th of 2018 okay. that I couldn't be around my grandkids or nobody. I went right. on parole and was granted parole. And there and 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 there you have it. Okay. And so I, I know you're tired of it. Yeah, I am, but and God I, put me in jail. And I don't blame you. And I don't blame you, but we have to look at whether you violated your parole or not. And uh, and it appears obviously that you did. My vote is also to revoke. Mm -hmm. You have two votes to revoke your poll. Also, I'm going to vote to revoke your poll based for the same reasons. Uh, that's not going to help you, brother. Three votes to revoke. Yeah, I, 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 I don't want to hear you. Three votes to revoke. Your parole has been revoked. It is, it is, uh, 1043 will be adjourned, East Baton Rouge Parish. Wow, that was really something you saw there at the end, how he is, I mean, I guess his truce, well, the, you know, he was trying to hide it. And then he, that's, a, that would not help him as Mr. Kelsey said, that's not going to help you, brother. Um, man, he got up, he walked away from them, he came back and started yelling. And, and someone uh, from the ministry had muted him, so you, you couldn't hear what he was saying. But someone from the uh, running the Zoom had, had had muted him. And, you know, it's interesting. He comes up with this whole, like, court argument, which I was actually intrigued by um, his approach. I said, okay, this is quite interesting. He's, he's, you know, he seems like a smart guy. Is what you probably call a jailhouse lawyer. And then I had a feeling that uh, that Keith Jones was going to entertain entertain it. Keith is is he just loves doing it. We, I've seen him get into it a few other times. He likes the the to to get into that kind of debate. Um, and but it did not help him. I mean, you saw it like oof, the the temper flared out. And I'm going to go share a few things with you that will add a bit of. Uh, color to this to this case because you know he's he, he he's really blaming everyone else and saying he's sick of it but no he's done other crimes to get locked back up he only got like a six or seven year sentence for the carnal knowledge of a juvenile which by the way looked it up and he he was 21 years old when she was 13 it was interesting how he brought up that we say by the way can you tell me how old she was and he knew that they wouldn't have access to the information or he was taking a guess because he wasn't being revoked for this, he was being revoked for the assault charge. So he hasn't kept his his hands clean. He he got locked up again, and and dude, she was a little girl, and then you're 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 an idiot enough to show up to your registration with a grandbaby in the car. First of all, you leave a baby in the car. Who leaves a baby in a locked car anymore? You don't even do that. He leaves the baby in the car. He shows up to the registration, and he's smart enough to know that he can't, but he does anyways. There's something very, very wrong. And what he's trying to say in his argument is, I'm put under the wrong, the wrong uh, requirements. 
I should be allowed to be with a young child because my victim was 13 and above and, and, and the statutes, the requirements only fall under if she was under that age where I couldn't be with the younger child. So I'm being misclassified. That's his argument. And it's like, so what? Maybe you are being misclassified. And like Miss Waz was saying, well, maybe she she wasn't 13 yet. She was almost, but let's assume let's assume that somehow she was 13 and 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 like like Keith Jones said, you signed the contract. And this guy's smart enough to know what that means, but dumb enough to show up to registration with the baby in the car. Who does that? You can't make it up and then lock the baby in the car. Leave the baby alone in the car? I don't even know why I'm harping on that, right? Well, but it's just, but hey, but let's, let me show you something Richard found. Tonight's Crime Stoppers looks at a man wanted for alleged domestic abuse. Raymond Craig Huddleston is accused of beating his ex-girlfriend. Police say she had cuts on her arms, legs, and face. The victim broke free, but Huddleston allegedly pointed a gun at her as she was leaving the scene. So if you know where he is, call Crime Stoppers. The number is 344. Tonight's Crime Stoppers looks at a man wanted for alleged domestic abuse. Raymond Craig Huddleston is accused of beating his ex-girlfriend. Police say she had cuts on her arms, legs, and face. The victim broke free, but Huddleston allegedly pointed a gun at her as she was leaving the scene. So if you know where he is, call Crime Stoppers. The number is 344. So if we just had Deja Vu and saw that clip twice, I apologize. I played it, and then I looked up and I saw that my recording was paused. Now, it could be that I recorded it, clicked pause, and then went to go to the next upload and forgot if I'd recorded it or not. So... I have no way of going back and checking without editing and stopping it and the whole thing. So if you saw it twice, it's not deja vu. It is deja vu, but it's it's my bad. But basically, remember, and maybe I said this already, but he 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 did his crime in 1999, criminal knowledge of juvenile. He got just a six-year sentence because I mean, come on, what's the big deal, right? And then he did this crime where <laughs> And his ex-girlfriend. So he's like saying, poor me, poor me. But here he is doing the, pulling a weapon on a woman, and then they're looking for him, right? So it's uh he's not uh you know, and then fast forward to and I'm guessing this is the one where they caught him. Today I'm Lauren Westbrook. We begin with an nine news update to a crime stoppers investigation into a fugitive wanted on multiple charges. Authorities tell us 37-year-old Raymond Huddleston was arrested last night after someone texted in a tip on his whereabouts. He's accused of beating his ex-girlfriend last month. Investigators say the victim was left with cuts all over her body, and when she tried to run, the suspect allegedly pulled a gun on her. We're told Huddleston now faces counts of domestic abuse battery, aggravated assault with a firearm, among other charges. So, yeah, that's our prince over there. And uh, that's the temper that I think we saw um, flare up at the end of the parole hearing he would that he was hiding so well and he was being so articulate and he was seeming so but really that is the the anger that 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 we saw come out there at the end you can only hide it for so long and you know the it, it, he really can't blame it he's blaming everyone but himself he's even you know and he's a smart guy actually you know he, he put in the time to figure out but but what it comes down to it, you can be, you know, you can understand the literature a little bit, but it, it wasn't relevant. Um, and, and, and meanwhile, again, I'll just start, I'll say it one more time. He drove to a registration with a baby in the car and you're re and you're registering. You can't make it up. So, you know, they got him on those charges for what he did to her, and then uh, and then he was revoked on those on these charges when he um, well he's revoked during for the registration thing, 
And what he was kind of also saying is, well, I was done with these charges. How can I get revoked? I'm, I'm, I'm serving, a you're revoking me on a different sentence, but um, it just doesn't work that way. And maybe don't pull a weapon and, and attack your, your uh, significant other. Um, I don't know how much time he is backing, but if he does, when he does get another parole hearing, uh, if that happens, we will cover it. This hearing took place in 2020, so he might be coming up anytime soon. The information that I have on him is that he is still incarcerated as of, um, yep, as of the link I have here. And You may call it karma, but it came back to bite him, what he did to that little girl when he was 21 years old. And uh, there you have it. If you didn't see it, you might not believe it. The prior moving failed to notify the officer of the address for supervision after moving. How do you plead? I plead guilty, sir. All right, number four, uh, at the time of the subject arrest, on 1 7 2021, the subject admitted to using heroin intravenously on a daily basis in recent months. The subject has been reprimanded and referred to a treatment on three separate occasions prior to his arrest. The subject failed to stay on track with substance abuse programs in the outpatient setting. How do you plead? I plead guilty, sir. All right, number, the rule number 10 reflects the subject is currently uh, $1,309 in arrears and supervision fees. His last payment was made 4 16 20. 20. How do you plead? Guilty. All right. Would you like to make a statement uh, on the record? Um, I would just like the board to, to consider that um, I've been incarcerated for a long time, and my last um, supervision on parole, I stayed out four years, and um, I was clean for three years for the first time ever. And uh, I lost my mom. I didn't know how to cope with it. And um, I just humbly asked the board to consider that I now have two kids and um, I just, I want to be a better person. And I just asked the board to humbly accept anything they would, you know, oppose upon me. As a violation, I, I would do 10 months. That's without any good time classes. You know, I just asked the board to consider anything that would get me home to be a father to my kids. And that's all I asked. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, vote for the record. My recommendation today would be to do not revoke your parole, but to continue on supervision after you've successfully completed a DOC approved uh, substance abuse program. Uh, Ms. Wise? My vote is the same for the same reasons. Mr. Jones? Concur, my vote would be the same, Mr. Kelsey, for the same reasons stated. Okay, you have three votes to uh, do not revoke, to return, continue supervision after you successfully completed a substance abuse, DOC approved no substance abuse program. Uh, three votes uh, for that. We wish you good luck. Good luck to you, man. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Brennan, and your honorable board, I just have a question. Y'all don't know how long and where I would go, huh? Uh, they'll get with you there. It, 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 you know, again, it's tough with the COVID right now. We're trying to get you as quickly as we can as, as, as close as we can so but they'll they'll let you know it should should happen relatively quick thank you all. thank you all so much thank you uh, it's 9 33 a.m we'll adjourn at tangible Paris. well that was one of the quickest revocation hearings that we've heard uh i've loved the result they're sending him to steve Hoyle to you know it seems that he's struggling with addiction he was honest about his addiction it's uh man there are a lot of you in the chat who have struggled struggled with a similar addiction so um and man it's it's got to be one of the toughest addictions to to stop so i'm happy they didn't just have him sit to rot and they're actually keep sending him someone hopefully you can again get back on the right track now what we have seen is during the COVID times is that it's not necessarily going to be quick he could sit there for we, we saw someone who was scheduled to go to a program and they thought it would happen real quick and he would get out and then we saw him like two years later and he still hadn't been put into the program and because of COVID so 
there's no guarantee it's going to be quick. We don't know. But if we see him again, we'll come back. Hope we don't. I'm curious. Do you think that that um, tattoo on the top there, do you think that that is a kind of like affordable way of cleaning up something he didn't want? Or is that intentional? Just curious. Um, you know, the one on the forehead. But anyways, let's see the next revocation hearing. With that, I'll let you go. Wiggins, it's my understanding that you are a first-class offender. Is that correct? Yes. You are in prison today for two counts of indecent behavior with a juvenile. You were sentenced on February the 22nd of 2016 to a 20-year sentence on each count to run concurrently. Your parole eligibility date is May 28th of 2019. Uh, you are not eligible for a good time in your uh, release. Your uh, full term date is October the 1st of 2032. Is that your understanding and is that correct? Yes. Mr. Wise has been uh, assigned to handle your case initially. So I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Wise. Mr. Wise. Yes, sir. You know, uh, Mr. Wiggins, I went over your case real well. I looked over each and everything. You you're, you, you sent us on uh, in 2016. Uh, you were, and I'm gonna be honest with you, right straight up, you got long, uh, you got strong victims opposition, also law enforcement opposition. Uh, you went through the phase one of your sex offender treatment program. I like to see a little bit more than that with the charge that you got. And I want you to start working on every sex offender class that you can get. And thank you very much. Mr. Uh, Roche, thank you, Mr. Wise. Mr. Mayor Bella, I have no questions. Mr. Wiggins, uh, is there anything you'd like to say? No, nope, sir. I just apologize for what I did. I just want to get, up, get out of here. Okay. Warden, is there anything you'd like to, any comments you'd like to make? No, I just like to point out he's been here uh, four and a half years, hasn't had any disciplinary reports. He's no, uh, uh, no problem with staff. Uh, he does need to get back in sex offender training. He can complete his first phase and and he's kind of uh, blacked out a little bit since then. But uh, anyway, I think he needs probably more uh, sex offender programming and maybe can come back up at a later date when he completes some more sex offender programming. Thank you very much, Warden. Mr. Wise, are, you, are we ready to vote, gentlemen? Yes. All right, Mr. At Wise. At this time, I'm going to vote. At this time, I'm going to vote to the nine. Now you done the phase one. I'd like to see you complete. I think you need more program. Very strong law enforcement opposition and victims opposition. Thank you, Mr. Roche. Mr. Chairman, my vote is the same for the same reasons. Mr. Wiggins, you have two votes to deny your parole. I agree with my colleagues. I'm going to also vote to deny your parole. Uh, you do need to handle, have some more sex offender programs. Uh, you need to, to kind of get on the stick and get some programs going. As the warden has suggested, uh, if, if, if you do some more programs and reapply, then you might have a better chance. So today your parole is denied. Good luck to you, sir. Thanks, sir. Well, that was a quick one. Now, I think what Richard wanted me to sh show you something was uh, something interesting. Now, keep in mind, he had this hearing on October uh, 16, 2020. And um, here is a court order that was filed January 24, 2023. So, and he was suing, and I, th I think Richard wanted me to share this with you because it's quite interesting. It's about social uh, security. So the background is plaintiff is incarcerated at David Wood facility. And he alleges that uh, he is unconstitutionally barred from receiving social security payments pursuant to 402 SSA um, 
at two, which limits such payments to prisoners, certain other inmates of publicly funded institutions. So he's suing, saying, hey, man, I, I have no money and, and I should be getting my social security payments. And this has kind of been brought up in a bunch of different hearings, not that they've been sued, but that inmates have are getting social security payments. So I thought this might be interesting for some of us here. So the plaintiff sued in the court October 3rd, 2022. In his complaint, he alleges that the SSA unlawfully deprived him of old age and or survivor's benefits. Uh, the plaintiff claims that this, um, that 402X is factually unconstitutional as applied. Ideas number one denies him. Originally, and here's one, it's just the footnote. Originally, the complaint was filed with both Donovan Wiggins and all of this. So I guess they did it as a double file. The, the latter was removed from this case for his failure to pay the filing fee. <laughs> uh, can you imagine doing that work with your, uh, like, I guess, jailhouse lawyer buddy or something and forgetting to pay the filing fee? And they, um, I mean, they probably just didn't realize he needed two, two filing fees. I don't know. But anyways, social security benefits without protection of due process equal protection by state of law. Okay, so plaintiff also argues that his convictions are invalid and he should not, that his, can. he argues in this, he argues in this appeal to get, or this lawsuit to get his social security that his convictions are invalid. I would love for the board to pull that up on him. And thus should not trigger forward to X restrictions. He seeks relief, including damages of about, am I reading that right? Is that $2 million? Certification of his case as a class action appointed of class counsel fees and costs. Okay. The guy, uh... all right, sure. The Tucker Act itself does not create a cause of action, the plaintiff must look beyond the Tucker Act, identify substant subst substantive source of law that creates the right to recover of money damages. And by the way, I'm back. My first morning back home. It's almost 5 a.m. now. I'm up with jet lag, but it's good to be back in my chair. Uh, money damages against the United States. Da da da. Plaintiff had the burden to establish. Blah blah blah. Well, courts. Um, Social Security Act claims the court does not have jurisdiction. Grant exclusive jurisdiction. Um, whenever I hear the word jurisdiction, I think of uh, I think of those crazies. What are they called? Criminal claims, the court also lacks uh, jurisdiction over plaintiff's criminal claims. Plaintiff's assess that he is alleged convictions. Um, the court is court specific civil jurisdiction. Um, what a moron. He claims he's innocent. I really hope they use this against him uh, one day. The transfer district court is not an alternative court. They transfer cases. Uh, suggests the plaintiff receive a final determination from Social Security Administration apps and such determination transfer fails. Like an element requires exhaustive administration remedies prior to filing. Um, effective blah, blah, blah. Conclusion. For those reasons, the court dismisses the complaint for lack of jurisdiction. Defendant's motion to dismiss is granted. Plaintiff is... Plaintiff's motion for summary judgment is denied as mute. Plaintiff's motion to leave uh, to proceed in form of Paris is granted. I don't know what this is. Sorry, guys. If someone does know, please, uh, please let me know. I mean, I don't see these words used anywhere else on the sheet. I don't even know where to reference it. It's probably like some type of legal word. The plaintiff motion to leave proceeding. 
Um, but I mean, if I understand correctly, they just threw it out. It's a pretty ridiculous suit, but I think it's a suit that should be used against him if he does try to get parole um, because he's denying his guilt. Um, <laughs> he was four years into a 20 year sentence. I don't know how he got parole opportunity for that. But yeah, let's do another one. You are 60 years old, is that correct? Yes, sir. You a third offender? Yes, sir. And uh, your charges are indecent behavior with a juvenile. You were originally sentenced on June the 2nd of 2015, and you were revoked on May the 23rd of 1917 of 2017. And you also were charged on that date and pled guilty to failure to register as a sex offender. You have a five year consecutive sentence. Uh, your parole eligibility date is August the 6th of 2009, of 2019. You uh, are not eligible for good time and you have a full term date of September the 15th of 2020. Is that correct? 2022, yes sir. 2022, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Roche, is this your case? It is. I'm going to turn this over to you then. Good morning, Mr. Bazo. Good morning, sir. How you doing, man? I call you Stephen. Yes, sir. Good. Stephen, as uh, Mr. Bazo said, you're 60 years old. Uh, you have a six-year sentence, and you served about four years of that sentence. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And I see where you have completed your sex offender treatment. Yes, sir. All four phases. All four phases. Are you eligible for good time? No, sir. I'm not. Okay. So that good time date is not accurate on your master record. You're not eligible for good time. I'm not eligible for good time on the five-year charge, on the one-year charge for revocation. I believe I am. And that's under Act 280. Okay. So so as of now, you have earned no good time. Yes, sir. No good time. Okay. Now, what puzzles me, Stephen, is that the sex offender treatment, all four phases, is the only program that I see that you completed. Uh, yes, sir. I've applied for the substance abuse program. I'm on a waiting list. I've also completed the Serve Safe program uh, through the Votech. And I've also gone through I, AANA. I, I saw that, but but safe serve is not a good time class. So the oh, only, just, only good time class you completed was sex offender treatment. Is that correct? Uh, no, sir. I've also uh, completed my reentry. Okay, when did you complete your reentry? Uh, right before, I believe, March of this year. Somewhere okay. Right okay. The so third you, class, Mr. Roche, I'm sorry, it's more than the third phase class that does earn CPRP credits or educational. It's a, a certified treatment program. They do earn right. that class. But both of those, BASO doesn't earn good time, so uh, it, it hasn't been applied to, to the okay. so, so, so even you didn't even get good time for your $100 pre release? Uh, no, sir. Okay, now that's great. Okay. Now we've got that straight. You were revoked in 2017. You were given the opportunity to uh, serve on probation and you failed to uh, register as a sex offender. Tell me why. Um, actually, I revocated myself on that one because they had sold my apartments in Bossier and I didn't have the money to move again. I just didn't have it with me. Because uh, I used all my money the first time trying to get out, okay. so I couldn't afford to. When the city of Bossier sold bought my apartments out, I couldn't afford to move. Okay, so you just replicated yourself. Yes, sir. Because I, I had nowhere else to go at that time, and I really did need some help. So this was really okay. helpful. Okay. So now tell me, what kind of position are you in now financially to? Be released, pay of between three and six hundred dollars to register 
find a place to live and find employment. How does that stand right now? Right now I have enough money on my account to register. Uh, I have help support through my brother if I need it. Uh, but however, I've now come to learn that the veteran, I'm a veteran, that they will take sex offenders in their program. So I plan on going into the veterans program when I get out to get some help. Okay. I didn't know so, that at the time. So, so tell me exactly where you're gonna live. You're gonna live with your brother? Uh, no, I'm gonna live at the VA. At the oh, VA. Oh, you're gonna stay at the VA house? And yes, sir. Okay, okay. And what about employment? Uh, employment, I'm hoping really that the surf safe flats can really help me there. Uh, because it's required at the restaurants and there's a, quite a few places around there that do hire. Okay. Now tell me about your disciplinary issues. Uh, I have, I've had no write-ups since I've been incarcerated. So, so basically in four years you've had no disciplinary write-ups? No sir, no disciplinary write-ups. I've been working in the kitchen here for almost two, over two years uh, and doing well I believe. Okay. Tell me, tell me again what your job is now. Um, I'm currently a baker. I'm the oven guy that makes all the bread okay. and rolls. And... What's, what's your favorite dessert? Uh, mine's actually the bread pudding. Okay. Uh, are you a trustee? Uh, no, sir. With my hold, I can't. Don't believe I can be a trustee. Okay. Okay. So. Oh, let me let me read my notes. Now let's get to your supervision. Uh, you've been on parole on two different occasions. Is is that correct? I was on probation once, and you finished unsatisfactorily, right? Well, now are you talking about in parole in nineteen eighty? Yes. Oh yeah, I, I completed that satisfactorily back in nineteen eighty. Oh, no, no, no. It was completed unsatisfactorily. Well, where was that at? I, I, I was only in prison in Kansas. That was June 16th, 1984. Uh, you were on probation and it was terminated unsatisfactorily. Okay, well that's because I was in prison in Kansas. I and then you were revoked in 2017. Uh, yeah, for a completely separate charge. Yes, sir. And, you, and you said you revoked yourself. Yes, sir. Okay. So, so we're not we we're not going to question that. You do have some opposition. Uh, you have opposition from the sheriff's office. You have opposition from the chief of police and the DA's office. And the victim is adamantly opposed to your early release. Opposition, you can't do anything about Stephen. I just want to make you aware that you do have opposition. Now, you have 10 arrests on your record and four or five of those, I would consider violent offenses. Have you uh, request, requested to be enrolled in anger management? Uh, no, sir. I don't believe I've had any violent offenses. Okay, one second. Aggravated battery with a dangerous weapon. Aggravated criminal damage to property. Disturbing the peace by fighting. Aggravated weapons charges. I think those are violent. Well, uh, yes, sir, but when was that? I honestly don't remember that. Was that back in the 80s? Now let's see. Your, uh, I know I got some fights back in the, the 80s. Aggravated the aggravated battery with a dangerous weapon was 1979. That's probably why I don't remember it, sir. The, the disturbing the peace by fighting was 82. And the aggravated weapon charges were 83. Uh, yes, sir. That was uh, about 40 years ago. I really don't remember all those. Okay, but but you do have some violent offenses on your record. Okay, then yes, sir. Yes, sir, I do. 
Okay. I really didn't know those, but yes, sir. Warren Goodwin, do you have any comments, remarks, or observations? Well, like um, Warren, Warren Goodwin, can you turn up the volume a little bit? Um, can you hear me now, Mr. Roche? Yes. Uh, as I uh, as I was saying, I think uh, y'all gone over pretty much everything I was gonna uh, submit to the board. Uh, Mazo has completed uh, uh, the Save Surf program. He has completed our pre-release programming. Uh, he, he's a uh, regular attendance in our AANA classes. Uh, he worked good. He's got a good work history. He went and graduated from our Thursday class and has really done a benefit to us in the dining room, uh, uh, cooking, baking, and, and things in our kitchen. He's not a problem inmate. His disciplinary record is uh, excellent. And uh, he hasn't been any problem at all since he's been here for almost three years. Thank you, Warden. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, that completes my interview. Thank you, Mr. Roche. Mr. Wise, do you have any questions? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you know, the failure to register as a sex offender uh, was charged to you after, after the very serious charge you had. But tell me, because if you don't, you're going to be right back. I, you, I was, you know, I was listening to everything you said, and I was real strong on you and everything. And, and then you say you don't remember none of this stuff. I, I'm telling you, there's some of this stuff behind you. You ought to be, be able to remember. I just want you to shoot, shoot straight with me today on the failure to rest. Or you think you're going to be able to keep up with that? Absolutely, sir. Uh, when I got revocated myself, uh, as you notice, I'm on a DUI probation violation. I was doing some drinking after I lost my job. And after going to AANA and 12 steps and finding out that the VA can help me out there, I've been four years clean of alcohol. I, I believe I can honestly do this sober, just like I did back in 1980 when I quit all that other stuff for almost 35 years. Okay. I don't have any more uh, questions, Mr. Barbell. Thank you, Mr. Wise. Uh, Mr. Maslow, I have a, a couple of questions. Uh, I noticed in the report uh, of the initial offense, uh, you indicated that you had been drinking. And yes. uh, tell me a little bit about your drinking problem. When did you start drinking? Uh, I really started real heavy after I lost my job up in Kansas. I started drinking a little bit more. I came down here and went to work. And then when the oil field dried up in 2015, I lost my job there. and I was really struggling with drinking alcohol after that point. And that's when I got this charge. And uh, then when I went out on my revocation or on my probation, uh, I was struggling work, you know, working real minimum wage jobs. I'm a machinist by trade. Uh, and I just decided I needed some help. And when I tried to get into Rayville, they wouldn't take me into a long-term substance abuse program. So this is when I found out the VA will take me. Well, uh, you, you consider yourself to have a drinking problem? Uh, yes, sir, I did. I still do. I imagine I still, I'm going to be an alcoholic. I hope my whole life. All right. Uh, and Warden indicated that you've been doing AA meetings. You go to AA meetings regularly. Yes, How sir. important is that to you? It's very important. I, I'm very big on the 12 steps and following the 12 steps of the program. Uh, we'll continue to do that in the outside world. And uh, that's really why it's important with the VA, which is help there. Uh, I'm also ever a veteran incarcerated. And I found out that. They you got muted for some reason. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, it looks, there you go. With you back. Uh, but I'm a member of Veterans Incarcerated and with a vet and I found out the VA will take sex offenders. Uh, a lot of people in treatment programs don't want sex offenders in there. So, Correct. It's very so but I found out the VA will and I qualify for that, but I got to get out there to get it. And in order to do that, I got to go through the whole disclosure. Thank you very much, sir. All right, sir. Uh, I don't believe we have anyone else to speak. Is that correct? Is the panel ready to vote? Uh, Mr. Mayor Bell, I give him a chance to make a final oh, statement. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Bezo, is there anything you'd like to say before we vote in your case? Uh, no, sir. I pretty much said everything. I believe I can stay sober, work the programs, and uh, handle my probation just fine once I get out there. Thank you very much. Okay, I think now we're ready to vote. Mr. Roche? Uh, Mr. Bezo, based upon 
your uh, completion of all four phases of the sex offender treatment. You've completed 100 hours pre-release. The only revocation that you have on your record was self-imposed because you were evicted because the city of Bolger City uh, sort of commandeered your property and you didn't have any place to go. You couldn't afford to register in a new place. Positive remarks by Warden Goodwin. Uh, my vote is to grant your request and upon completion of a substance abuse program. Warden Goodwin, can we get him into a substance abuse program? Yes, sir. And you had that at your facility, right? Yes. Hey, Warden? Yes, sir, we did. That's correct. Okay. So I, my vote is to grant upon the completion of a substance abuse program, which you've already applied for. After release, you have a curfew from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. You are to get um, a um, let's the substance abuse program is going to do the substance abuse valuation. So that will already be done. Uh, you know, attend NAAA meetings at least three times a week. Uh, you are to do community service at least five hours a month. And um, you are to report to your parole officer weekly for the first 90 days. Good luck, uh, Stephen. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Mr. Roche. Mr. Wise? At this time, I'm gonna vote to grant after completion of a substance abuse program, AA meetings three times weekly, nine to six uh, curfew, and follow all recommendations of sex offender treatment. I mean, of uh, sex, uh, sex offender uh, recommendations. Okay. And also- Thank you. Uh, That'll be it. Thank you, Mr. Wise. Mr. Bezo, you have two votes to grant your uh, parole. I am likewise going to vote to grant your parole with the same conditions as outlined by Mr. Uh, Roche and Mr. Wise. Uh, you will uh, complete the substance abuse program. Once you complete that program, you will be released. Uh, you'll have a curfew from nine to six. You'll have three AA meetings per week. You'll do five hours of community service work per month, and you'll report to your probation, uh, your parole supervisor weekly for the first 90 days. It's also my understanding that you're going to be living at the VA uh, right. house. You'll be yes, able to register as a sex offender as you are required to do during that time. Uh, yes, sir, I do, but I have to go to Bossier City on that home first before I can actually say I'm going to get in there. I don't know until I go to jail there and answer those charges. All right. Okay. So, will that, does that mean you may be released? Excuse me, sir? To a detainer. To a release detainer to a detainer in Bossier yeah. City. To a detainer, okay. yes. Okay. Your parole has been granted. Uh, you will be released to the detainer uh, with the following conditions that we've outlined. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. All right. Well, this hearing took place in October of 2020. And, you know, that's three years ago from today, October 2023. And maybe things just have changed, or maybe I'm not sure, but. I was looking for Mr. Roche to bring up the victim, the survivor in this hearing. This was a case where all we knew is that the victim was adamantly opposed, but we knew nothing else. Here is a man, a roach, that is locked up because of what he did to a juvenile. The judge, of course, hello, Louisiana, gives him probation, probation. No prison time, no jail time, just a slap on the wrist. Just you got to do one thing. You got to register. And the guy doesn't register. And what's he say? He says, ah, I, I did it to myself. I, I didn't have the money to register. I was, I was kicked out of the house. I had nowhere to go. And it's like, 
You know what I would say to that? I would say that's a dangerous man. Because if not going back to prison is really just not a big deal. Where it's like, eh, I'm just too lazy to figure it out. I mean, it only would have taken a little bit of homework. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of Googling. It turns out there, there, there is a facility that would take him. He only had found that out once in prison. All you have to do is Google it. All you have to do is put maybe an hour or two of, of effort. No, I'll go back to prison. Well, you think that that's a deterrent? You think that prison is a deterrent for someone who does something to children then? No. I'll just jump on his impulsive urges because what's the big deal? It's just prison. He doesn't seem to care at all. Doesn't seem. No, he doesn't. How is that not terrifying? How does he deserve with that with that emphasis of being just completely lazy and content with being locked up? What does that not tell us? He's listed on the registry as a tier one, which means he is listed as the most dangerous kind. But we don't have more information. We don't know what it was that he did. I mean, gosh, in these cases, he could have been doing it to a five-year-old for five years. You may say, no, no way they would have given him probation. No, no, but they do. I'm very disappointed in Mr. Roche on this one. I, I, I the, the victim's adamantly opposed. The victim needs to be brought up. He, he needs to state what he did. He needs to, you need to get to know what he's thinking in his brain. Just to release him back out there. Don't you see the red flags that I see that I think you see? Here's a man that legitimately is too lazy to do anything to keep himself out of prison. So he just gets locked back up and it's no big deal. You don't think he's going to then reoffend and get locked back up again? Because it's no big deal. It's a pathetic interview. It was like they just wanted him to get out or something. That's really it. But this is why you need the assistant DA to show up. You need someone to show up to represent the victim. You need someone to show up to say, this is what happened. This man is dangerous. This man cannot be let out. That's just my opinion. I wish I had more information I could share, but, but there's nothing else on it. Because, you know, it's only a child, so it's a big deal. But with that, I'll let you go.